Uh, my name is Billy Pan. I am a glaucoma specialist at the Beverly Hills Institute of Ophthalmology. I am a current user of the iTrack Advanced. I was looking for something that was going to supplement uh, the glaucoma treatment armamentarium, basically. At the time, I was going between different angle-based procedures, and I wanted to find something that was uh, a little bit perhaps less destructive and left tissue available so that I could treat again in the future if necessary. And the iTrack was a device that I had heard about already at that time, uh, and it was the perfect time to try it. So the original iTrack was the one that I had used to begin with, and that one required a little bit more nuance, manual threading of the catheter. And so going from the original iTrack 250A to the iTrack Advance was really quite easy. Compared to the original iTrack, it is easier to deliver the catheter. I think everyone can say that, that without a doubt, the delivery system is smoother. Uh, it makes the process more readily available, um, not only to myself, but I, think, uh, but I think also to other surgeons as well. So I think the fact that this procedure is now an easier to adopt procedure is going to be able to get into the hands of more people and also more patients. Uh, I do mostly combined with cataracts. Um, I would say my split is probably about 75-25. I would say the procedure is pretty uniform. Once you have enough experience, you can get a really good idea of how the catheter advances, how the viscodilation proceeds. Um, and also beyond that, I think you get a really good understanding of just how well the eye uh, is going to behave. Day one out, uh, their pressures are usually single digits around 10, and then eventually it trends up a little bit, sits in the mid-teens. And I've reviewed my own uh, data for the past three years, and it's pretty consistent compared to what literature shows, which is it settles down into the low to mid-teen range, which is a pretty phenomenal outcome. So a lot of the patients that I'm taking in for the advance are surgery naive, um, especially for those combined patients, um, because I'm taking out a cataract and I'm going to be working on the angle for the first time. The ones that are standalone patients, some of them may have had uh, eye stents in the past. That's pretty uh, typical, just because the eye stent uh, is a great device and it's been around for a long time and there's been a lot of them implanted. If they need additional pressure lowering, uh, an eye track works well uh, because it can fit around an existing eye stent if necessary. If we talk about other devices that can be already in the eye, we're probably talking about an eye stent or a hydrus or a, an actual glaucoma drainage device, like a tube, right? So if we think about an eye stent or a hydrus, that's targeting the proximal system, trabecular meshwork. Canaloplasty targets proximal and distal. It can target the distal portion of patients who've had stents before. It can and it basically can rejuvenate the entire conventional system for those who have a tube in place where the actual flow of aqueous has not been directly through the trabecular meshwork and has been completely shunted away through the tube as well. I think the eye track fits for any patient that has glaucoma. Um, there is a spectrum of patients that are uh, in terms of ease of use, going to be easier, which are the ones with beautifully uh, open angles uh, that have a substantial amount of pigments, so that differentiation of the landmarks and the angle is uh, clear and easy. And so those are great patients to start off with. Um, and moving from there, you can tackle basically, basically anything. Um, with the removal of the cataract, the angle opens up really well. And so I often advocate doing this after cataract surgery, uh, but that's to every patient's, or, or sorry, every surgeon's kind of own discretion.